So Sella and the Spades is a kind of like a coming of age uh, teenage movie. It it kind of exists in like a microcosm of you know like the the you know the kind of like the the how do I put this <laughs> like the closed off like teenage world. Um, you know, where you feel like you, like everything else in the world doesn't matter except within this one microcosm of your cliques within, uh, within high school. Um, it's very much akin to stuff like Brick, uh, or Rushmore, where it's very much about like, kind of like the internal politics, um, more than it is the, you know, like the typical concerns of, you know, like a teenager in school, you know, stuff like, you know, like homework and, um, uh, certain types of relationships and, you know, connections with teachers. A lot of that stuff kind of gets pushed aside here not so much for the um it's, it seems at first like it's pushed aside for this war of factions within the school like when the when the film first starts up we're introduced to all these different uh factions of this boarding school um there's like there's the spades there's the bobbies there's the prefects there's a whole bunch of different gangs and they all have like their own different uh, their, their own different ideals and what they do for each other and how they kind of like assert their dominance. Now the spades um, seem like they hold the most control because they hold a certain amount of control over the vice. So like they supply a lot of the drugs and alcohol that comes into the school. And he, But the thing is like the film doesn't just focus on like the faction. Like it doesn't focus so much on the school, it doesn't so much focus so much on the you know the war of the cliques Thank goodness it doesn't, because it would have gotten old pretty fast. It mainly focuses on the leader of the Spades, uh, Sella, who's played here by um, uh, Levy Simone, who who is basically like she's seasoned at this. You know, she realizes you know how much control she has as the seventeen year old leader uh, of her own pack. You know, she's aware of how much power and dominance that she has, and she wants to hold on to that as long as she can. Because um, she can sense that, like, her grip might be slipping as the year goes on. And uh, and she's very much concerned about um, how much trust she can have within her organization. Because, like, for the longest time, her right-hand man was um, Maxi, who's played here by um, uh, Jarell Jerome. And he's slipping a bit. He's, like, he's not quite making deliveries correctly. It feels like he's a little bit distracted. So she's not sure that she can trust him. So she's she's a little bit worried. Like she's she wants to pass to pass down this power to someone who she can trust, someone she knows who can take the reins um, when she moves on, you know, past the school. And she thinks, well, hey, how about this new girl uh, Paloma, who's played by um, C uh, Celeste O'Connor, who comes into the school as a bit of a blank slate. Um, she's fairly new. She well, she's completely new. Um, she's a photographer, so she basically takes in the entire campus. She snaps photos of everything. And so uh, Sella figures, well, maybe she can absorb everything like a sponge. Like Maxie Warren's like, I don't know, she seems like a bit of a greenhorn. I don't know if you could take her in, but, but Sella's like, trust me, I can, I can train her. You know, I can make her the way that I want a leader to be. And, and so, but the thing is, like, Paloma is not quite like a blank slate. Like, she has her own ideas that she's forming about the school. Like, she she takes note of everything. She notices how every meeting of the cliques always has this sort of like fury to them. Like, they're always constantly fighting. Um, they come together on very little. So she she starts forming ideas about how she can better assert herself to sort of rise to the power that Sela wants her to attain. But at the same time, Sella's also kind of a little bit, a little bit untrustworthy of Paloma too. Like she wants to trust her, like she wants to have have her within her grasp, but thinks like you know maybe I can't trust her because as we soon learn, uh, this isn't the first protege that she's tried to take on to be her successor, and the last one didn't end so well. So Paloma's kind of like debating how far she wants to take this relationship with Sella. And if she wants to actually, you know, go along with her and take the reins, because it might get pretty dark and pretty brutal as this goes along. Um, now, the film remains entirely focused on the relationship between Sella and Paloma throughout. Um, they're together the most, they have the most feuds, um, and their, their drama is what's most in question here. And I love that it maintains it. 
um, it feels like it could veer off into all different sections here, um, including like when the climax approaches, the climax is that, you know, the school is called off the prom. So all the sects basically band together and form their own prom out in the woods. Now you'd think that, okay, so the assembly of the prom would be the climax and then, you know, whether or not the prom takes off would be the tension, but no, the prom is just background. It's more background um, so that we can still focus on whether or not Sella truly trusts Paloma, um, that we're still questioning it. Um, this was directed by uh, Teresha Poe, and this is her directorial debut, and it's very strong. Like She has a lot of great long shots, a lot of direct shots. I particularly love, um, they, show, they showcase it in the trailer, um, the scene where Sella is speaking directly to Paloma uh, through her camera, but she's also speaking directly to us. Um, in this sort of like cutting style and being and this brutal honesty with herself that kind of feels akin to Spike Lee um, from uh, from a little bit of his shooting style from like do the right thing where you know we're getting glimpses of her world and she's speaking directly to us like right to the camera and there's something there's something like I mean for one it grabs your attention immediately like you cannot take your eyes off the screen um, but but in another way like it's also got this um, uh, this this vigor to it like it like it has like a you know a passion you know for 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 youth within there and and that it's it's bubbling and boiling throughout and it never feels like it's hindered by by pretty much anything like it always feels like these teenagers are have this amazing amount of control over their lives where like the politics within like their inner circles get like messy and become more complicated as the film goes along um, the one big problem, though, um, and I won't spoil it, but I mean, like, the, the ending here, the ending just kind of feels like it peters out. Like, the climax is, is, is very tension-driven. Like, it feels like it just keeps boiling up and up and up and up, and then when you get to that final last bit of shots, it kind of just peters out, almost kind of like, like there's like this, this kind of like plateau realization about just you know where these characters exist um like because like it pretty much gets up to like a life or death scenario and once they pull back it, it there's kind of like this sobering moment that they end the picture on realizing that i i suppose ending on this note that realizing you know their their lives at the school are is is, is finite and how much control and how much power they weave is also finite um but honestly, like maybe it's just like the way that it's sh that it's shot that it just kind of like lingers and just drops off, and so we're left with kind of almost like this kind of like empty ending that doesn't quite because like there's been like a boil throughout and then to just kind of have it just drop almost drop off a cliff like almost literally by the end of the film, um, it does kind of hinder it. Um, th there's also like for, for a lot of people who are watching this you. You know, if you're not fully engaged with this world, like if you were watching Brick and basically asking where are the teachers, where are the parents during all this, you're probably not going to like sell them the spades because it's entirely within their world um, where it feels like teenagers have this much control over uh, gangs and vice and th the school in general. Um, but for having that focus and that amount of like kind of, a, 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 you know, of like brutally honest drama, um, between these these two women, um, it's definitely fully engaging. Um, there's a great moment that I think best encapsulates uh, this film, especially for um, for for Poe's directorial debut. There's a moment where Paloma is basically reflecting on her year and saying that, man, you know, this year was great, but the next year, oh, I got so many plans. It's gonna be so great next year, and this year is just gonna be like a blip. And that's kind of how I feel about this film. I feel like like Teresha has like a, an amazing directing talent within this film clearly you can see it here she she has an amazing eye she has a, this this amazing uh knack for great dialogue that holds your attention throughout um i just kind of feel like it falters towards the end like it doesn't quite know what it wants to do with these characters by the end of the film but at the same time i'm like you know what for a directorial debut this is pretty damn good and i can't wait to see what she does next with this material um well not material in terms of like a sequel but in terms of what she 
um, what she wants to bring about with her um, uh, with her next batch of films. So she's she's definitely a name I'm gonna be keeping an eye out, uh, an eye out for. So um, so yeah, as as a first directorial debut, um, in the same vein as stuff like Rushmore and Brick, I feel it's very much in that same vein. Considering that Rushmore was fairly early Wes Anderson and Brick was fairly early Ryan Johnson, so yeah, this is a this is a great first film of a, of a director who I hope goes on to many great things. So for Sella and the Spades, three and a half out of five stars.